When's the last time you checked the mail? No, not your email or DMs, but that little box containing what is mostly referred to today as snail mail. Maybe you're expecting a birthday card or that new gadget you ordered. Whatever is in your mailbox, you probably don't often stop to consider how the mail ends up in your hands. Nowadays, it might seem like social media and texting have rendered the mail obsolete. People don't really stay connected through the mail anymore. But is this really the case? How has the Postal Service evolved over the years? The mail has been around for ages, literally. People have been sending messages to each other ever since we learned how to write things down. There are mentions of mail in the Bible and proof of mail delivery systems in ancient Greece and Egypt. Even animals have helped deliver the mail. In 1860, the Pony Express was the only way to get the news if you lived on the west coast of the United States. Some of the first mailmen were actually orphan boys on horseback who rode the route from Missouri all the way to California and back. After only 18 months, the horses and their riders were sent out to pasture, so to speak, because they were out-innovated by the telegraph. The stops along the Pony Express route were an important precursor for the modern-day post office, especially in rural towns cut off from major trading hubs. As technology developed, postal workers opted for trucks instead of horses to deliver the mail. From territorial dogs to rogue sprinkler systems, it was still a job that had some harrowing moments. Yet, mail carriers were seen as vital members of their community, often warmly regarded by all. In the digital age, it's hard to know who exactly placed your late-night purchase on your doorstep. The role of postal workers seems almost obscure, even obsolete in the advent of email and social media. But how exactly has the way we send mail changed over the years? Let's look at postcards, for example. Back in the day, postcards were popular gift shop fare for tourists wanting to reach out to folks back home. On the back of the card, you'd dash off a quick thinking of you before sending the miniature picture of the Colosseum or Eiffel Tower to a friend. Nowadays, if you want to stay connected to people while you're traveling, you'll most likely post a picture on Instagram or send a Snapchat using a fun geo-filter. The upside is that you can share your experiences with a wider audience. But unlike a postcard, your friend can't stick your Instagram post on the fridge. One thing you could definitely stick on the fridge was your Christmas wish list, curated from a catalog that would randomly wind up in your pile of mail. You never knew exactly when the catalog from your favorite store might show up on your doorstep, but when it arrived, it was an event to flip through each book and circle the things that interested you. Back then, you'd actually have to phone the company to place your order, or actually visit the outlet to make your purchase. Now, now you can buy from almost any retailer in the world online and have your stuff shipped to your house in a matter of days. Sites such as Amazon are like an endless catalog, one that you can keep on refreshing and ordering from no matter the season. But unfortunately, no matter the time of year, bills often made up the majority of the mail received. We're lucky that now most of that stuff is handled online. Imagine having to take your stack of bills with you to the bank to pay in person. Thanks to internet banking, most bills are paid directly through your bank account via pre-authorized withdrawals. No need to wait in line when everything is already taken care of online. Postcards, catalogs, and bills are just some examples of technology making mailbags less full. Even today, it's kind of amazing to think that someone can send a piece of mail or a package from someplace on the other side of the world and it swiftly ends up on your doorstep. In fact, did you know that mail delivery was actually the catalyst for modern-day air travel? As soon as the Wright brothers made liftoff in the early 1900s, people started experimenting with sending mail by air instead of by rail. However, early flight was very dangerous 
dangerous. With no radio, no navigation system, and an open cockpit, it made sense that the price of airmail was set at a premium. By 1995, airmail became the international standard and the main way to send your mail from point A to B. But how does the mail actually arrive at your house? At one point, mail was delivered door to door. Each house had its own mailbox with a little flag that the mail carrier would put up, indicating that they'd visited. In rural areas where the houses are spread far apart, it's still done this way. But now, in suburban neighborhoods, the mail comes from a big distribution center and is delivered to one box centrally located in the neighborhood with a slot representing each house. Some might say the personal touch is lost compared to the old days when postal workers would go door to door. But speed and efficiency are paramount these days, and nothing seems to represent that more than the evolution of the mail. Just think about how post offices have changed. They were once the central hub of a town, where the exchange of news and notes from family or friends abroad brought everyone closer together. Now, post offices rarely stand on their own and most often operate out of kiosks in convenience or drugstores. You might think that the rise of the internet and email means that post offices are used less. However, the volume of mail that post offices handle has not declined significantly over the years. Only now, post offices deal almost exclusively with packages. I mean, when was the last time you reached out to someone through a letter? And on that note, if no one is sending letters anymore, what will be the fate of stamps? It's the last step to mailing any letter, and it always left a bad taste in your mouth. You'd have to lick the stamp and place it in the right hand corner of the envelope. Yuck! It's a good thing that all stamps nowadays are peel and stick. Stamps are also big business. There are still hobbyists all over the world who collect stamps, with some really rare ones going for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Although the average stamp collector might be enthusiastic about the National Postal Service, up against competition like FedEx, UPS, and even Amazon, does the United States Postal Service stand a chance? The United States Postal Service, or USPS, was the only game in town for about a hundred years, until private courier companies like FedEx rose to prominence. Along with the concept of mail, the idea of a private courier is not new. The rise of e-commerce upped the demand for faster delivery, and because companies like FedEx are independent, they can promise just that. They can also offer a variety of services tailored to a business's needs. For example, these companies were the first to develop package tracking in real time, which is now an industry standard. But Amazon is the dominant force in today's mail marketplace. They control every element of their distribution process, from selling the product to delivering it as well. How much of a threat are all these giants really to the good old USPS? Well, despite the demand for faster delivery, there are still plenty of people for whom a longer wait is worth saving a few dollars in shipping costs. Plus, the USPS is obligated to deliver to every address in America, which is crucial for people living in remote locations. This is something that the private companies are not liable to promise. The real kicker is many of these companies are still reliant on national postal infrastructure for some leg of a package's journey. Although the competition has tried to privatize the mail, it's safe to say that the National Postal Service is here to stay. For a while, at least. So what's next when it comes to mail, you ask? Well, let's start by getting rid of addresses. Yes, that's right, the USPS is working on a program that assigns you a unique code that corresponds to your email. Instead of giving out your home address, you'd share your code and then all your mail would be automatically routed to where you're living. For people who move a lot, there would be no need to forward your mail to a new address. In terms of delivery, Amazon is leading the way with their development of drones that would do all the delivery work. 
This project is still in the works, as a lot of people are skeptical about its accuracy and safety. You can just imagine packages of toilet paper dropping from the sky on people's garden flowers, or the new paperback you ordered stuck in the neighbor's tree. So is this just another blow to your local mail carrier? Are robot drones the next postal workers? Or maybe a revival of the Pony Express? Whether the mail is derived from the sky or on the ground, digitally or even holographically, hopefully the future of mail receives your stamp of approval. Looking for more? Well, just tap on another video. Show us some love and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. And thanks for watching!